Hello, welcome to the LaRouche Pack Weekly Report for October the 26th, 2011. I'm John Hofel, and with me in the studio today are Diane Sayre, one of our national slate of candidates from New Jersey, Sky Shields from the basement, and Lyndon LaRouche. Uh, good morning, Lynn. Good morning. Well, this subject today is an interesting one. It's a novel one for this proceeding, but it will, I think, a bit fun. Uh, this, yesterday evening, we had a presentation and discussion of the nature of the clinical insanity of President Barack Obama. It was highly clinical and to the point. It was simply a truth which is known to a number of people but is not much said publicly wherever Obama is still around. The fact is that Barack Obama has a very specific kind of mental illness, a form of insanity identical to that of the famous Roman emperor Nero. And his kill ratios, which he's piling up recently internationally, are simply an expression of an identical mental disease, a mental disorder typical of the Emperor Nero. He has the identity of the Emperor Nero, not as a person, but as a type, a clinical type. That he was picked, obviously, by London, by the British monarchy, and put through a number of paces to test his suitability for the career of President of the United States. He was rushed into the presidency but on the orders of the British monarchy, who orchestrated every bit of his rise to power into the presidency. He was actually funded from London by the British monarchy, which is how he was funded, and so forth and so on. Everything that he has become, including the mass murderer he's become internationally, was already programmed into him before he was chosen to become the President of the United States by the British monarchy. His, his kill ratio is now about to increase. And if you read the life, the true life of the Emperor Nero, you have an exact track of the personality of President Obama. You also have, unfortunately, a track of the U.S. citizens who will not take seriously the need to throw this guy out of government on the grounds of clinical insanity under Section 4 of the 25th Amendment. He is the hardest case of that type on record since the Emperor Nero. There have been other people of similar t dispositions, and, but he is the worst. And if the American people continue to be so stupid that they don't cause him to be thrown out of office, they brought it on themselves, and they brought it also upon the innocent who are going to be, suffer as a result of their tolerating and supporting this president. This president is the death of civilization. If you want to keep civilization, you want him out under Section 4 of the 25th Amendment. He could be also thrown out for a number of other reasons, reasons of tantamount to treason as political crimes against the United States. But the real basis for the treatment, the just treatment of this guy as a mental case is as a mental case. He's obviously of the clinical type of the Emperor Nero, and he's already entered into the phase of demonstrating in practice as in the case of Libya and other cases, and American citizens murdered by him in violation of all law, that those lives depend upon getting him out of office now before he can accelerate his kill ratio into the internal United States. What he's doing to U.S. citizens to murder them abroad, huh? in various countries as in near Asia so forth, what he's doing there is a precursor of what he will do here, unless stopped. I don't care who you are or where you are. Your life is not safe while this guy is president. It's the same, same decision that you'd make on what happened under the Emperor Nero. Usually they were prominent people he killed. He talked to them. He did all kinds of things. You can read the record. But this is what we have. In fact, if this guy is not removed from office very soon, he could be removed under two principal reasons. Insanity, which he qualifies for under Section 
under Section 4 of the 25th Amendment. Or he's committed a number of crimes for which he could be summarily impeached, initially taken out of office while under impeachment, and then finally he would be impeached if the evidence were brought forth because he's clinically insane. He's a clinically insane mass murderer right now. And that's the th question which we have to address here today because it should be addressed in every quarter of the United States. He should be thrown out by the general opinion of the citizens of the United States who prefer not to be murdered. And we don't know who they are, nor do they, but it could be anyone. Next. And you see in his declaration that he says the Congress isn't fast enough to do the things he wants them to do. And therefore, he's going to take it upon himself to make all those decisions that the Congress refused to decline to take up. What are you talking about? You're talking about a self-proclaimed dictator. His very existence in the presidency is a violation of law, a violation of our Constitution. And anybody who condones him is, is culpable for con contributing to his criminality or the exercise of his criminality. Therefore, the time has come to call the alarm. This guy goes out of office now, preferably on a summarily suspended from the presidency under Section 4 of the 25th Amendment. That would be the straightforward way. However, the danger is so great that, that the articles of impeachment must be brought forward at the same time. And we can put him out of office on both counts. He's violated the law. He's violated it massively. He's betrayed, his, he's betrayed his oath of office if it ever did mean anything to him. But the thing you have to understand about this man is he was the type he is, that is of an American Nero, Emperor Nero. He was already that when he was put into office, and he was already that which, at the time the British monarchy chose to put him into office. And it was the British monarchy, not the willful American, conscious American people, who put this slum, this bum into the office. He's a British product, product of the British monarchy, probably something that passed through the Tavistock Institute. But he was screened because they knew then, as I, as I showed you know, in April 2009, where I gave this guy's characterization as an Emperor Nero type, now he is fully manifest exactly what I said was true of him in, back in April of 2009. Now you get rid of him now or your life in this nation isn't worth much because he's going to bring the murder of Americans, which he took overseas, he's going to bring it back into the United States. And you could be probably the next on the list whether you're a member of Congress or just an ordinary citizen. Anyone that the new Emperor Nero, Obama, wants to destroy would probably be destroyed, just as it was a great decimation of the leading families of Rome under, Ob under well, I say, the, the, the past Obama, or the, <laughs> at the Emperor Nero. And that's the question we have to consider and the question the American people have to consider. Get this guy out. Legally, first of all, the first choice for me is the amendment, 25th Amendment, Section 4. That would be the normal procedure. He's also committing murders. Now he's committing murders of Americans overseas, and he'll do it in the United States. And you may be next. The one remedy is go and give him on both counts. He's impeachable for crimes he's committed, including these murders which he's perpetrated overseas. He's also impeachable because of his specific crime his, and his specific men mental disease. He's impeachable on both counts. The point is, the essence of the matter is speed. Well, I think what you were talking about last night, which I found some really jarring, I mean, two factors. One is that it's a gestalt of his identity as a Nero personality. It's not a compilation of the, you know, killing the Americans, killing Gaddafi, not dealing with the refugees in Haiti. I mean, it's a whole string of things, but it's the mindset. And then the other thing, which is 
the question why the American people don't act, why the Congress is so paralyzed, and you were discussing this question of imperial rule, where the ruler is outside the rules of the game that everyone else is expected to abide by. Well, take the case of members of Congress who have not impeached him or not taken action against him. Why did they do that? They know him, they're close to him, they have the evidence. Why did they f uh, fail to draw the conclusion? This man is clinically insane. He's a mass murderer in the function of president. Well, I tell you, he's largely opportunism. Mm -hmm. Two things, opportunism and lack of guts. We don't have many heroes in these generations. My generation saw the back end of the heroism. Hmm. We had people who didn't come back mentally from Vietnam. They were a broken generation. When Jack Kennedy was killed, was murdered, and it was murder. It was murder ordered from London. They took out, look what they did to the Kennedys. They took out Jack Kennedy. Then they took out his brother at the time that the brother, Bob, was about to receive the nomination for president by the Democratic Party. And then over the years, you found the, the heirs of these brothers chopped off one, 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 one. The Kennedys have now virtually disappeared, except for one. I'm not going to mention who I don't want to put a finger on. <laughs> so that, and therefore, we, had, we went into a period of the war in Indochina and other needless wars and stupid wars and other criminal activity. What we happened is the baby boomer generation became the baby boomer generation, the D generation. Mm -hmm. huh? Huh? And then the children of the baby boomer generation were the victims of their parents' heritage. And they, they too today are crippled by the legacy of that heritage. So we have a weakened population. And, and you look at the history of nations, especially the history of our republic. The development of our republic they actually began in, inside Italy under the influence of a, one cardinal in particular, Nicholas Acosa. And there's the long trail of the development of European civilization to its highest form, including the this same Cusa was responsible for sponsoring the travel from Europe across the oceans into settlements in the United States to get away from the evil that was in Europe then mm -hmm. because he diagnosed that this was not curable in Europe itself. We would have to move Europeans as across the ocean into what became North America and other continents and to there build up the morality and character suited for a nation. Hmm? And that happened, it was tried by, under Columbus's impetus, who was explicitly following the instruction of, of Christopher Columbus, Cusa. Hmm? But then we got people across the water, and, but then the Spanish group, which were the original initiators of this action, hmm? well, they were taken over by the Habsburgs. The Habsburgs destroyed the potential of the Latin American, so-called, population, which came back later. And the best friend we have now is Argentina is the one nation that's right. the most characteristic of the Columbus's intention. <laughs> but so we developed in North America because of the failure of Latin America, so-called. We developed in, in the Massachusetts Bay Colony the roots of a nation, a nation built up from, largely from Europeans, but built across the water in North America. And we had, we're beginning with the that matches the Bay Colony before it was crushed by the British. By the, uh, it became the le center of generations. I, mean, I had an ancestor who was one of the first landers on the Mayflower. Uh, was, some, some people have that distinction. Lots of people have that distinction, actually. Uh, I, we developed there from the Mayf Mayflower landing and the Massachusetts Bay founding. We developed the nucleus of what became the United States with the nucleus of what had been intended by Nicholas of Cusa. So we had generation after generation of Americans, those who immigrated from Europe, others who built up the possibility of mobilizing a nation here. 
to free Europe itself from the inherent corruption of Europe, which persists to the present day. The problems of Europe today, especially Western and Central Europe, are, are rooted in the failure huh, of Europe to meet this challenge. The same challenge which Nicholas Acuza had recognized. We've got to cross the water to get away from this crazy Venetian system control. So we had always had in the United States a continuity up until the Kennedy assassination, a continuity of the American tradition, which was specifically a European tradition brought into the United States, or what became the United States. And that's, that's essentially the situation. But then, with what happened, the killing of Kennedy, and a whole series of new murders of presidents, which is rather a typical body language sport uh, uh, going on. And so therefore, we lost a generation we lost the cultural development of a generation which began with the baby boomer generation who were the victims produced by their terror which was unleashed by the Indochina war. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you have today, we have weakness in, in the United States, a moral weakness among the citizens of the United States and among our political figures because they no longer represented that tradition which is more, in my generation, identified by Franklin Roosevelt and also Jack Kennedy. We lost that connection to that tradition, which had been centuries in the making. And now today, we, from a weaker moral standpoint, our morals today stink compared to that of my, my generation, with all the faults of my generation, which I know very well. It's no secret. But we lost that, and we have, with a, from a weaker standpoint in terms of... Uh, population, much weaker moral character of the, of the population of the United States today than we had before. Right. Well, it's a big paradox because you have Obama, the dictator, and then you have a culture which says we're against authoritarian personalities. But it is the like, authoritarian. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and the cowardice you get from these guys right now, it's funny, it's a paradoxical cowardice because it's not even, it's not as though, it's cowardice for the sake of cowardice because this is not something that's going to save them. Right. You can imagine there might be some kind of intelligent cowardice that helps you avoid danger, <laughs> but this is not. This is deer in the headlights kind of cowardice. Exactly. This is they're going to get run down no matter what, but they refuse to move because of tradition. They're trained not to respond to a situation. I mean, you take the difference between, like, as you described, you were able to, in 2009, forecast the character of what Obama was going to become. Well, he was already that. Exactly. It was because it was there. Right. It's not a question of waiting until the crime happens and then describing it. Like people are sort of immersed in the horror of the situation right now, when really removing Obama right now, his crimes he's already committed, there would be a pretext. But you're removing him because of the crimes that he's going to commit. Exactly. That's inevitable that he's going to commit because that's in his character. It's possible to act with the respect to the future in that way. This is not something. This isn't dominoes unfolding because of an event causing another event causing another event. There's, there's an intention there. Criminal right. insanity. Exactly. Um, yeah, already, it built into it. Right. And our response is to have a real human intention in response. That's what you're, that's what you're, you're yeah. counterposing to it. Yeah. Not counterposing some action to another action. Right. You're not counterposing an action to an event. No, our thing is, is, the, is the people of the world, or the people of the United States in particular. That's our responsibility. We must protect them from oncoming menace. And the entire population of the United States is now threatened by an evil menace coming out of London, huh? which has taken over the presidency of the United States, along with the weakness and corruption of many of our members of Congress. They're actually stinking cowards. When faced with this issue, they become stinking cowards. They will say, well, maybe it will escape me. Maybe I will escape the plague. Huh? The blood on the door. Huh? Maybe the blood is not on my door. They hope that the blood is not on their door, that they were not going to be the ones to die in the next cycle. And they lack the moral ability to mobilize themselves to say, I'm a human being. Therefore, since I am a human being, I have to protect the human species. I have to protect it against this evil. And now the other thing I, men I mentioned, I mentioned extension last night, is Obama was the killer he manifests himself to be and more. Right. He, was the, he was the Emperor Nero already at the time he became president. Mm -hmm. 
and even before then. He was a created entity, created by the British monarchy. And when you look at the fact that he, this man has done nothing which goes out of the uh, pattern of his characteristic behavior at the time he became president, you can see it already in his presidential campaign, his, initially. This man was a menace to civilization. He was crafted by that yeah. with the approval of the British monarchy. He was shipped into the United States and given the votes by corruption, by unlawful corruption, mm -hmm. to become president huh, by the British monarchy. And everything he's done, the, the fact is what I said on, in April of, of 2009. I said exactly what it is he was and that is what he is and that's what he was then. He was already a mass murderer at the time he was in the presidency. He manifested that perfectly in terms of what I looked at in April of 2009. Everything I said about this man has come true. Everything I'm saying about his character will come true unless he's stopped. And it's important to realize that that's the way the people who shape history operate in those terms. You made it clear that you were able to recognize that. Anybody else who said they're going to wait until he committed a crime was a fool because they sat back and waited until, you know, you wait until the damage is he committed, done. He committed a crime under British money, British funding, and British direction. He committed the fraud of securing his election as president of the United States. It was done by a fraud. And people went along with it. And those who went along with his certifying his election were the first criminals in the act. But the other point is there's nothing that he has done or is about to do that was not built into his character before the time he became president. In the time he was being groomed. This was the intention. They recognized that this, that this potential was there in him. They, I don't know about the grooming. Grooming can mean a number of things. This, thing, this insanity, which the British exploited in shipping him into the United States as their, their puppet, huh? yeah. was already there. Right. It was not something that was conditioned by that. It was already there. What all the British did in this, and I, I contest to this officially because I did describe this man's behavior, present behavior yeah, right. precisely in April of 2009. Everything I said was true and is now proven true. He is exactly now what I knew him to be back then. Mm -hmm. So the, this is the nature of the thing. This man is a pathological character, a homicidal killer of the Nero type. And if you take the Emperor Nero's profile, take his profile from his accession to the, to the emperor, position of emperor, and tell his death, his suicide, death by suicide, you have an image of the exact internal personality of the Emperor Nero, i.e. Obama. And if we let him stay in office without impeachment now, and all those senators and others who refuse to have him impeached and thrown out of office are actually guilty of accomplices of a major crime against the people of the United States. And they've got to cut that crap out right now. They've got to get sit real and become citizens of the United States in truth again. Become patriots in truth again. Get this guy out of harm. Put him someplace where he can be an exhibit to future psychologists and psychiatrists who want to understand insanity. And they can keep him in a clinic someplace safely guarded and find out all the whethers and whens of his insanity. Because this man is a clinically insane mass murderer. Period. I, mean, he, I knew he was then, in April. I was right on every point I made. He is that now, and if he's not removed from office, <laughs> a lot of our American people are going to be removed from office suddenly. Now, that's what makes it so terrifying where you have all these people who say, well, we're Democrats, so we have to support him because he's a Democrat. They, they, I think part of it is hysterical denial about the disintegration of the transatlantic system because I can't imagine facing the fact that the system is finished and allowing even a mediocrity to be president, let alone a lunatic. You gotta look at blame you've got to blame the immorality of the majority of our population. You've got to blame the immorality of the boomers, but you've got to also understand the immorality of a younger generation. It is the immorality of a younger generation which is built upon the immorality of the boomers. 
which allowed this kind of corruption of our society to, to occur. And the fact that there were so few people who had the guts to tell the truth about this guy. I mean, I've known the truth about it for a long time, particularly when I did this study on his entry of the presidency. I didn't know him very well in terms of detail until he became president. I saw some horrible things, signs from him, warning signs, when his, his presidential campaign. The man was a thug, an immoral thug. And he was based, supported by the drug, international drug pushers. That's where his money came from. Mm -hmm. hmm? from similar people, hmm? and he was, he was diagnosable as being a problem then. He should never have become president. He should never have been allowed to become president. The evidence was already there that he should not become president. But they capitulated, and now they've got it. Now we've got to the point, if we don't get rid of him now, civilization may go. Because the effect of an American president being a Nero can bring down civilization. It brings down a kind of hysteria which destroys civilization. Put this guy in, in custody, put him in safety and protection. He's a precious, he's a precious asset. He's an animal, <laughs> one of the living animals of the, of the dead Nero. Nero's not around to tease anymore. Right? Right. Now, but you've got the perfect replica, replica of, of Nero in the form of this president. And we should keep him in a safe place where we can examine all his peculiarities clinical peculiarities, and make sure we don't get another one of those things coming in. And he can perform a service for the remainder of his life of showing us what a real nut is. The Jurassic Park for Roman emperors? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, this thing that you're raising about the generation, the children of the baby boomers, I mean, it's very, very clear from this Occupy Wall Street phenomenon where they are so fanatically committed to not having demands, I, I mean, to being so-called democratic, that there's actually no need, even though it's infested with all kinds of agents, there's actually no need to take it over because their culture is precisely what the British Empire has imposed on the United States. So instead of being an opposition to Wall Street, they're actually part of this well, outlook. The, the key thing is, that, is the key factor goes to the baby boomer generation, not taking responsibility. What the Manhattan demonstrations represent, a lack of assumption of responsibility. Protest without responsibility. Mm -hmm. right. And that's the characteristic of the baby boomer generation. We don't take responsibility. We, it, we rage. We have no morality, we have no honor, but we rage from time to time, or we play the game of poor suffering innocence, eh? mm -hmm. sacrificial lambs. They never take responsibility for the consequences of their action or their inaction. And inaction is an action. The failure to take a necessary action is an action. And that's what you got. The baby of more generation, war, war service denial. That's how it worked, that's how the function. There were the problems already from the, from the McCarthy period, so-called, you know, that, that created the part of it. But this, when that generation grew up and they were faced with the death of Kennedy and the rise of the war in Indochina, they became the egotists who believed that if they had good grades in university, they would never go to service in war. The t argument then among them, as I knew from that time, was we're, not, we're too good to sacrifice in warfare. It's the poor guys who go to, war, go to die in, in this war. We don't go to die in war. We have exemptions. We are in universities. We're getting good grades. We're protected. We come from the right families. We have exemptions. Hmm? And then when, once the draft was, came down on them, then there was a sudden change. Now they went ape, and literally ape. And these were the people who cheered for the assassination of Bobby Kennedy. The leaders of that movement cheered for the assassination. I intervened and raised a fuss about it, and they called it off. But they were going to have a mass demonstration appraising the murder of Bobby Kennedy. And that defined their souls, not of the head type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, 
So therefore, this kind of corruption, the loss of morals, the loss of any real morals or decency in the baby boomer generation, re it resulted in the effects on their children who suffered from the effects of that. And that's what we have today. So you have a, a pack of cowards, of slimy cowards, among leading members of the Congress and others. You, you have a funny type who's against that, who really do fight. They often come from Republicans, huh? but not the bad ones we get, the batch we got now, huh? but from a few Republicans who are, are, who are men of conscience. They may not agree with what I, uh, what I agree with uh, in terms of particular policies, but they agree with one thing, that this is wrong. Huh? Mm -hmm. They still have a sense of right or wrong. Right. And that really is a minority yeah, of the yeah, members yeah. of the Congress. Yeah. It's a, there's a minority among the members of the Congress who have the guts to distinguish between right and wrong. They have some who will concede that it's right or wrong, but they say, not for me now. Don't ask me to do it now. This is not my time to do that. Hmm? And what you run into in the field. Yeah. Hmm? And that's, that's where the problem lies. So you have a, a generations, two generations, which are destroyed in part by the effects of the assassination of mm. Kennedy. And it was done from London. The order was from London. And that's where we stand. And you have all these people are kissing the butt of London, including people in the British Isles themselves. Because this is an empire, as I explained last night. This is not a kingdom. This is an empire. It's a world empire, international empire. The British, the British royal family has no loyalty to the people of England. Look at the condition of the people of England and Scotland. And the Ireland, they have no sense of responsibility. They have a sense of responsibility to an empire, the British Empire, the British flag, which is the imperial flag. And that's the force that people submit to. You see it in Europe. The cowardice in Europe, is, especially in Central, Western Europe, is immense. The shriek of cowardice is appalling. No guts at all to speak of. Just a few rare individuals. But the British Empire is the British Empire. It is not the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. The people of the United Kingdom have a cowardly disposition on this matter. But that's not their instinct. The instinct lies with the emperor, with the, with the, with the queen in this case, or what's associated with her. That's the force. That's the murderous force. And Obama is nothing but a tool of the British Empire. Maybe we could ship him there. Mm -hmm. Except the empire is rather large. <laughs> Despite the rumors. <laughs> yeah, better than bringing the empire here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, but well, that's the point. Uh, I think we ship them to the center. I think the center of the empire is somewhere within in the Atlantic Ocean. So. I don't know where it is. I, it, I think it's in hell, actually. <laughs> 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 they send an ambassador from hell <laughs> into the, <laughs> occupy this monarchy. No, but it underscores the necessity to act on this process. That if we're going to act on it, we have to act on it from above and as though from the outside. You're not going to treat the thing from the inside. There's some necessary steps that have to be taken, but from the standpoint of how do you shape the whole human species, not from the standpoint of how do you act on any existing system now. And this is what you've been discussing with what, what actually is the ontology of a credit system. Mm -hmm. not, not the simple, there, there are, are policy measures connected with it, and those are real, and those you have to understand, and those you have to put into place for it to exist. But the real question is, well, what is the human species such that we can act in the universe effectively. And that's a, that's a scientific question, actually. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of what, uh, what creativity is. Uh, and it's also the question of time. Right. If, you don't, if you believe in clock time as reality, you are not mentally qualified to understand history mm -hmm. or understand society. Because time is actually to be measured in real time, in physical time, rather than clock time is to be measured in the succession, or by credit system, by the succession of contributions to advances in mankind's ability to deal with the challenges of the universe. Hmm? And so successive generations go through a revolution in the discovery of scientific principles and similar principles. And these principles change mankind's nature, which is why they're principles. You actually are you're sort of genetically, intellectually, yeah. genetically redefining the human species to go from a lower state of development to a higher quality of existence. And that, so therefore, it's this, these processes of advances as 
by scientific advances, discoveries, that these advances define the change not within the nature of mankind, but in the nature of what mankind's development is. So that you get successive generations who have ideas and capabilities that previous generations had not acquired. You're right. Right? So you, you could measure time, economic time, has to be measured in terms of these evolutions. Right. Now this is a voluntary process and no animal is able to change its species. But what human beings do by making discoveries of physical principles and applying them, they actually transform themselves, even though they're still human beings, mm -hmm. in such a way that they go to a higher form of life, mm -hmm. where animals can't do that. We have a voluntary intellectual capability, therefore our clock should be based on mankind's ability to progress right. in these terms. Huh? And in that trend lines mean nothing in that process. You exactly. can't project anything from a current state into a future state linearly. No, you that's, a, that's the whole point. So mankind is a creative being. Mm -hmm. Not that we, cre we don't create ourselves biology, biologically, in biological form. The biological form still more or less exists independently of our cultural forms. Huh? But it's the cultural form of, of development to successively higher states of existence, like we become a superior species to what we were in a generation or so earlier. Often, sometimes they go the other way. <laughs> as, as we, I know notable cases like this. <laughs> so it, it's mankind's ability, creative ability, to develop ideas which amount to an increase of man's quality as a species, but still human, and still of human quality, but this. So therefore, what, how you should measure the clock time by the development advances in the capability of the human species, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which are the intellectual in, in character, essentially. Mm -hmm. So you have each intellectual level of, of advance is an advance in the human species. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the human species re remains essentially the same species. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the human species is the only species that has exhibited to us so far this remarkable capability right. to be biologically the same species but to have changed to the equivalent of a higher order of species yeah, of right. existence. And that's us. And our, our t time is should be measured, essentially, not in clock time, but in the equivalent of biological time, mm -hmm. in, in, in terms of the evolution of mankind to higher states of existence, mm -hmm. as through the intellectual development of the human species. Mm -hmm. The power to invent, the power to accomplish, the, in, the insight into human beings, mm -hmm. the quest for colonization of, of other planets, mm -hmm. yeah? the quest for exploring this, the galaxy. All of these things are things which are natural to the human character, or will be natural to the human character as they are, as they are approached and achieved. Therefore, the imperative, the extraterrestrial imperative, as he was said in the early days of, the, of our, our period, of the last century, the extraterrestrial is a natural expression of mankind's nature through scientific accomplishments to progress to the point that we can efficiently explore other parts of the solar system. Mm -hmm. We can have practical effects in that. We can have practical effects which are useful to mankind as a species by doing this. The so-called extraterrestrial imperative. Right. Uh, and that is our nat mankind's natural imperative. We exist in the universe. We are part of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a function of the universe and the extent of that function is going to increase naturally. Right. And we should rejoice in doing it. Because it's our, it's our nature, our special nature, for scientific and equipment progress, is the essential human nature. Mm -hmm. Anything else is inhuman. Right. Anything to the contrary is inhuman. And the, the real crime of the assault on nuclear power is precisely this, that the empire set out to destroy nuclear power as a way of interrupting this process. And also of destroying the human species. Yeah. Reducing it. The intention, look, the, the British Empire, the British monarchy itself, and its assembled family, held a series of meetings in England among their type. Huh? And they proclaimed that the population of the planet, the human population, must be promptly reduced from the order of seven billion pe persons to less than one. And that is the current policy of the British Empire. And that is the policy which the British Empire reflects perfectly in the presence of Obama. That's his intention. He's a beast, not a man. He's a beast because he's been turned into a beast by the British who own him or bred him. <laughs> you say that's a rigorous definition. That's not an insult. That's a, that's a rigorous 
because you define human by what behaves as human. That process of development, of the success of higher and higher levels of development, that's human. That's right. Nothing else is human. Right. So what, we, what happens is we can get under this influence, we can get the extinction of the human species. Right. And tolerating Obama is, constitutes a threat to the human species' existence. I don't think there's much worse crime than that. This man has to be removed from office by conscience-stricken officials now. I would recommend strongly the fourth condition of the 25th Amendment. I would also recommend impeachment on grounds of criminality, a violation of law. It's a complementary. But these two measures have to be set forth and, and acted upon now. Those who refuse to do this may be guilty of themselves of complicity in crime against the human species. I want to know how many people have the guts to do that, to put that, with what that necessary step on. How many people lack the guts to do that? How many people in high places lack the guts to do that? And you know, in my eyes, they are very shameful creatures. I regret having to call them human because they are doing nothing which is in, actually in the human interest. It's time that the truth were told and the bitter words were said because that's the only way the truth will come out. Well, that seems like a good place to end it. The gauntlet has been thrown. Let's see who's got the guts to pick it up. All right, well, thank you. We'll see you next week.